you know, I really should cover the full story here. Sorry, I had to shut off the fan. When the Lord says here in verse 38, this is a face palm verse. When he says this, it's a face palm. It's like, oh man, when are they going to get it? Okay, enough. That's really how you really want to translate it. But, having said what I did, because that was true too. See, when I sent you out without money belt, bag, and sandals, you didn't lack anything. But now, whoever's got the belt, meaning, you know, the wallet, take it along, likewise a bag. In other words, be prepared. And whoever has no sword is to sell his coat and buy one. That's what he said. And yes, it does mean a physical sword, but that's not all it means. See, if I'm going to sit here and criticize a guy who twists this verse into pacifism, I also need to go to the flip side and say to the hawks, hello, this is not a license to just go hacking people up. See, the Bible is two-sided. This is what we're all getting wrong, me included. I mean, it took me a while to... I have my own issues with Scripture where I screw it up too. You can't go either to the right or to the left. God joins the truth in the middle, high to low. And at that juncture right there, at that very thin line where two opposites meet, that's where the truth is because the truth God is holding both opposites together with an answer okay so let's just have a little look first back here at the verse oh I hope my my computer doesn't die on me on this okay all right this word here Makaira let me pull up the thingy this is a very important word in the Bible. Oh, my mouse is going wacko again. Every time I get to a really important dramatic moment in a video, this is what happens. Oh. Bear with me. I guess somebody doesn't like me doing these videos, okay? All right. This word, Makaira. This is the same word that's used in Hebrews 4.12. And it's used to, to signify scripture. Scripture as a sword. Now that tells you two things immediately. Number one, yes, you war. Yes, you war physically. No, if you're a soldier, you do not feel guilty about killing the enemy. That's your job. Okay? However, if you're going to do your job right whether it's the nasty side of having to do your job, okay, that's what a ruler has to do is punish, parenting, whether it's the nasty side or the nice side, you have to what? Hebrews 4.12, rightly divide the word of truth. Rightly divide means to know what's the left side and what's the right side. To get to that middle where the two opposites join, Put your hands together, put your palms in front of your face, and join your little fingers together so that you see this little line with your palms outstretched. And that line where your two little your two pinky fingers are joined together all along to your to the bottom of your um, wrist. That line in the middle between the two hands is the truth that God is aiming at. Okay, he's joined everything together like that. So you've got right hand and left hand. He's always talking about right and left. The Greek expression is menda. Okay, in order to rightly divide the left from the right, you've got to have the machaira. You've got to have the sword of God in your head. Matthew 4.4 4, always occurring. Okay, you've heard me say that many times. Hopefully I don't have to explain it by now. So yeah, he is talking about a physical sword because you've got a physical body and there are physical nasty people in this world. You have to learn how to defend yourself. This whole verse is be prepared. 
So he's not just talking about a sword either. He's saying a bag, in other words, ready for travel. Okay, money, you gotta have something to eat, something to live on, and you have to be able to defend yourself. It's a part of a whole. That's the point I'm trying to make here. It's part of a whole. All right, you got money. I mean, this shouldn't be too hard to understand, but you know, let's just do it anyway. You got clothing, travel, stuff that you have to have with you every day in order to get by. And you have to have a way to defend yourself. <clears throat> you have to be prepared to fight. It is not pleasant. But then it's also not pleasant to have to keep, take around all kinds of baggage. And it's not particularly pleasant to have to work to make money. None of these things are pleasant. They're all part of life. They're all necessary. Very much more so, you need all of those things in order to have time to study Bible. And when you study Bible, that's this word Machaira here, that's in Hebrews 4.12, then you know how to get the money. You know what to buy as your kit. You know how to use the sword and when not to. See, I just finished making several videos about fight, 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 fight. Okay, but you don't fight all the time. So let's now go back to the passage in the whole chapter. It's not a hard chapter to understand. You've heard it before, and that's part of the problem we have with Bibles. We've heard it so many times. Um, you know, it, the meaning stops, you know, getting to us. It's too familiar. That's one good thing about studying it in the original language is it takes away your familiarity and then suddenly the scripture can get through to you. This is the week he dies. Okay, I want, to, I want you to see the full picture of what's going on here. This is the week he dies. He knows he's going to die. This is the week he tells them he's going to die. The very night he tells them. He's going to die. Here's a setup, typical drama, Greek drama style. All the NT writers were big on Greek drama. Okay? There's your setup for the chapter. All right? And now you got your first damn Passover. This is actually occurring four days fast of the proper calendar. They did not intercalate. That's how come the Lord could eat the Passover and yet die on Passover. It should be called Good Wednesday. <coughs> I cover that in my passplot.htm webpage in great detail. It took me almost two years to write it. So, Jesus sent Peter and John, go prepare the Passover. Okay? Now, he's eating and he's saying, you know, this is the covenant, the new, the new covenant. Okay? Somebody's going to betray me. And woe and all that stuff. You're familiar with that story. Okay. And then he's telling them, you know, don't lord it over others. Okay. It doesn't mean that you be a wimp and a doormat either. But you don't regard yourself as being superior. Because you're not. God's superior to all of us. And whatever you got, I own. And whatever I got, you own. That, that's that's the only way I can get through this business of making these videos because it totally intimidates me to have to talk about Bible because I'm female and I shouldn't I'm not allowed to be intimidated I'm not allowed to care about that I'm not allowed to have any mercy or pity about my own condition it's Bible it supersedes okay so see he's telling them look I'm die I'm gonna die and here's what's gonna happen when I die be ready for it, okay? Peter, of course, the impetuous Peter. Oh, I, I'll go to prison and death for you, yeah. Uh -huh. And then, you know, he's going to deny him. And, of course, Paul's going to do the same thing in Acts 22. It's hysterical. John did the same thing. You should see how he ends his gospel. But anyway, I'm getting off track. That's the context in which he says... You know, before I sent you with nothing, no preparedness. Okay, see, God always likes to join opposites. Before, no preparedness. 
But now, prepare. Okay, well, we're in this phase of history. We're post-cross. So now you got to be prepared. Not just prepared to fight, but prepared in all ways. What did Peter say? Be prepared to answer for the hope that's in you. Okay, and the word is called Makaira in Hebrews 4.12. This is what he's saying also. He's not merely saying a physical sword. Okay? He's not a pacifist. Go look at, at Ephesians 5 and 6, where Paul turns everything spiritual into a weapon. Okay? You have physical weapons. You have to use them. You have to be prepared as part of life. The God of the Old Testament and the God of the New Testament are the same God, but he's full spectrum. And this isn't going to do you any good at all if you don't have the word as your sword running it. That's why this verse is in here. That's why Luke is including it. Okay, and you're going to see why in just a second if I could just get my mouse to stop hanging up. Okay, that's what he's saying. All right, now look, 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 look. See, here he's telling you why. He was numbered with the transgressors. He's quoting um, Isaiah 53, 12 there. Okay? He's quoting it because he's about to go to the cross. He's reminding them of Isaiah because he's just told them he's going to die. Okay? Nimna is the Hebrew there in Isaiah 53, 12 for numbered. Okay? Now... They're still not getting what he's telling them. See, he's telling them, hi, I'm going to die. Isaiah 53, 12 is about to take place. So get the word play here. Take the Makairo with you. If you have to, sell your own clothing to get it. In other words, sell your own clothing to get a physical sword, but even more, sell, do whatever it takes to get the spiritual sword in your head. That's what he's saying. He's not talking about just one or the other. He's talking about both. And it's because I'm going to die here. That's Isaiah 53, 12. Wet boshim nimna in Hebrew, in my American accent in Hebrew. Okay. So, but, you know, they've been drinking. They're a little too dumb to live. Oh, we got two swords here in the upper room. And he's like, okay, basta, never mind. Okay? Now, look, 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 look. Then they fall asleep while he prays. And then comes, and this is actually um, not here, but in John, a cohort that's between 200 and 600 Roman soldiers. That, that, that's really overkill, considering, you know, the distance and where it was, that, you know, and all that. That's another story. And then Judas kisses him. Okay, now... Because, look at this, see, sword, see, whoever has no sword sells Colton and buy one. Oh, Lord, who do we strike with the sword? You just told us about the sword. See, that's the other side of the ledger. You just told us about the sword. We should fight, fight, fight. Fight fiercely, Harvard. <laughs> you know, no, that wasn't it either. And one of them, we know it's Peter, struck off the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Hello, the slave of the high priest is not a combatant. If you're going to strike anybody in the crowd, you should be striking a soldier. That's what a sword is for. It's for fighting the enemy. The slave of the high priest is not your enemy. He's a slave. He was bought. He had no choice but to be there. Why are you doing it to him? See, Peter didn't understand a thing that the Lord said right up here. Not a thing. See, he's taking that blue and he's linking it with this blue. And they say, oh, we got two signs. See, now you know he's not talking about this referring to the swords at all. And even if you didn't know what I showed you from the Greek. Oh, boy. Face palm. Ugh. Okay, well, see, that's why Luke is telling the story in this order. And people have known the story that Luke is writing out. They've known it for 30 years by the time he writes. Okay, 
he's assembling the story elements in a certain way to, to give a meaning to the story that they needed to hear that God wanted to be, you know, encapsulated as scripture. It's a specific way of telling a story everybody already knew. Even when Matthew, who wrote the first gospel, even when he wrote, everybody knew the story already. But it had to be committed to writing for future generations and to be the official version that God wanted told. And there's about, I don't know, 20 years difference, maybe. Matthew comes out like 30 AD. And then Luke comes out somewhere 52, 58, um, maybe before 52, because Paul's already quoting Luke's gospel in his own writings, which started in 49. But there's at least a 10-year difference between the two books, okay? So see, see, look. One of the stuck off the, the took one of those swords. See, oh Lord, we gonna strike somebody with a sword? So one of them strikes off the slave, the slave's ear. See, and now he says stop. Now stop doesn't mean isn't the same word, but it's a parallel concept. It means leave off, desist, cease and desist. Okay. Okay, wait a minute. I can't put my mouse on the table. See? Ate. Ah, oh. Okay. But let permit has this flip side. Yeah. Cease and desist would be a better way to translate it. But, if, you know, it's got other meanings, too. It's got a full semantic range, just like um, Echinos does. Echinos. Echinos. All right? See? See, this is what I like about this guy. He tells you where it starts from. Okay? Leave him alone. Cease and desist. See? Cease and desist. All right? So they are doing the other side of what's wrong. And you can really empathize with the pacifists because, you know, we're humans. We always go off in the one side of the boat or the other. We never manage to stay in the middle of the boat. So that's why we're always sinking and tipping over. Okay? See? We're gonna strike him with the sword. See, the God just finished telling us, so, you know, we got two swords. That's enough. Oh boy. You see. So that's the context of it. So what do we now know? Just from this passage alone, even if you didn't have nine bazillion other verses telling you the same thing. Do you do that nasty thing, or do you do that nice thing? Well, in anything you do, what should you do first? Ask God. What does the Bible say? Because, like, why do you want to even be alive if it's not to learn God's opinion? Peace out.